Your heart is a muscle. The job of your heart is to pump blood around your body. Your blood is essentially made up of liquids and some solids. The solids in your blood are red blood cells, your white blood cells and platelets. The liquid part is made of plasma, protein and salts. Red blood cells are important for carrying oxygen to various tissues and organs in your body. Now, if your heart must work harder against the resistance, this will wear down your heart because it must do more work. You want your heart to work when conditions are ideal. This is when your blood pressure is normal. What is deemed normal per guidelines? There are two numbers we look at. The top number is your systolic blood pressure. The bottom number is your diastolic blood pressure. You want the top number to be less than 120 millimeters mercury and the bottom number to be less than 80 millimeters mercury. Now, imagine a garden hose. For a water hose to work, it needs to be kink free so that water can flow through it freely. Now, if you were to step on it, it will build up water pressure behind the area you're stepping on. The analogy would be that your blood vessels are like the water hose. Like the resistance in the water hose, your blood vessels can also get blocked. This can happen when cholesterol accumulates in your artery walls building a plaque. Like your foot on the garden hose, this will obstruct the flow of blood through your arteries as they are narrower. Pressure builds up behind this blockage and this can cause damage to the inner artery walls by causing tiny tears. Over time, because of sustained pressure, your heart will be affected as it must work harder to keep blood flowing in your body. This is why if your blood pressure continues to remain high, you are at an increased risk for heart disease, heart failure, or even strokes. What are factors that can influence blood pressure? Here are five factors I will expand a bit on the first three. Number one, peripheral vascular resistance. Number two, cardiac output. Number three, blood viscosity. Number four, volume of circulating blood. Five, vessel wall elasticity. Just looking at one, in the previous segment, the resistance that I was talking about in medical school, we referred to as peripheral vascular resistance. What does this mean? Another way of looking at this is how well your blood vessels can expand if there is increased content, in this case, blood. We refer to this expandability as compliance. Let's use another analogy. A pipe made from metal is stiff, therefore not compliant. A balloon, on the other hand, can expand, therefore it is more compliant. If we look at our arteries, they become stiffer the older we get because of calcification. Another reason they get stiffer is because of atherosclerosis. This is when your arteries become thicker and stiffer because of the buildup of plaque. Remember I talked about this earlier in the video. Just to recap, this is when fats such as cholesterol get stuck in your arteries. Now we know that when vessels become stiffer, they become less compliant. They cannot expand to accommodate adequate blood flow. This increases resistance to your blood flow and the pressure within the arteries increase. This is why we say you have high blood pressure. The medical term is hypertension. The word itself describes exactly what is going on in your blood vessels. Hyper means beyond or over. Tension means stretching or straining. Therefore, hypertension means straining beyond. With hypertension, your blood pressure is high, causing a strain on your blood vessels. The second point I'll look at is cardiac output. This refers to how much blood or the volume of blood that your heart pumps in a minute. In other words, anything that influences cardiac output, such as stress, will affect your blood pressure. The third point I'll look at is the viscosity of your blood. And that depends on solids found in your blood, such as plasma proteins. The thicker your blood, the stickier it gets. If your blood becomes sticky, it affects your blood flow and pressure. Perhaps the best analogy would be comparing the flow of water and honey. For example, smoking can make your blood thicker, making it easier for it to clump together. What is blood pressure? Blood pressure, as the name implies, is the force that your blood exerts on the inner walls of your arteries. Throughout your day, your blood pressure can go up or can even go down. You might go down to your doctor's office and they might say your blood pressure is, let's say, 140 over 93. What do these numbers mean? These two numbers help us understand what is going on in your body. The first number is your systolic blood pressure. This is the pressure in your arteries when your heart is beating. That means when your heart is contracting. When that number is higher, 
we note that your heart must be working harder with every beat to push blood around your body. The second number is your diastolic blood pressure. This number reflects the pressure between the beats when your heart is relaxing. What are normal blood pressure numbers? According to the American College of Cardiology, normal blood pressure is defined as less than 120 millimeters mercury and less than 80 millimeters mercury. Our blood pressure is defined as elevated when the systolic blood pressure is 120 to 129 millimeters mercury and less than 80 millimeters mercury. High blood pressure stage one is defined as 130 to 139 millimeters mercury or 80 to 89 millimeters mercury. And hypertension stage two is defined as more than 140 millimeters mercury or more than 90 millimeters mercury. What is the prevalence of blood pressure here in the US? Nearly half of the adults in the United States, 47% have hypertension. Now worldwide, according to the WHO website, an estimated 1.28 billion adults worldwide aged 30 to 79 years old have hypertension. What affects your blood pressure at your doctor's office? Well, there are a couple of factors we can look at. What you ate or drank before the measurement. If you drank coffee or smoked or even exercised within 30 minutes of your doctor's visit, this would make your blood pressure go up. Number two, the way you can sit can affect your blood pressure. If you let your arm droop or cross your legs, blood pressure will go up. A third factor would be anxiety or nervousness. While you're having your blood pressure measured would make it naturally go up. How should you be sitting when your blood pressure is being measured? Here's some factors you can look at. Sit comfortably upright with back support. Ideally, this should be five minutes before the measurement. Do not talk during your reading. Ideally, your bladder should be empty. A full bladder can affect your blood pressure. Do not eat or drink 30 minutes before your blood pressure reading. Have your feet flat on the ground without crossing them. Rest your arm at chest height. So as you see, there are a lot of things that can affect your blood pressure. That is why if your healthcare provider is making the diagnosis, there should be two or more elevated readings obtained on two or more occasions before a diagnosis is established. Have you wondered what your healthcare provider is listening to whilst measuring your blood pressure? First, your healthcare provider will inflate the blood pressure cuff around your arm. There's a gauge attached to that cuff that measures your blood pressure. Your healthcare provider will slowly let air out of your cuff while listening to your brachial artery. This is the artery running here in your elbow. The first beat that they will hear will be your systolic blood pressure. Your diastolic blood pressure is when they are unable to hear that beat anymore. Symptoms of high blood pressure. Usually, people with high blood pressure do not have symptoms. That is why it is referred to as a silent killer. The times when your blood pressure reaches a critically high level, such as 180 over 120, and you may experience symptoms such as headache, chest pain, shortness of breath, nosebleeds or severe anxiety. What happens to your body when your blood pressure continues to be high? Like I said, you can't feel your blood pressure when it's high. The problem is if this goes on for several months or several years, it gradually damages organs in your body. Which organs can be affected? Your heart, brain, eyes, kidneys. So what does that mean? If your brain is affected, you're at an increased risk for stroke. If your eyes are affected, this can lead to vision problems and in extreme cases, blindness. If your heart is affected, you are at an increased risk for heart failure or heart attacks. If your kidney is affected, this can lead to chronic kidney disease and kidney failure. With some individuals, your sexual function will be affected. All this sounds terrible and frightening and no wonder high blood pressure is called the silent killer. So what can you do if your blood pressure is high? This is going to be a series of videos on high blood pressure and in the next couple of weeks, we'll look at how you can prevent or treat high blood pressure. And if you do have medications, what is a preferred choice? I'll put the links up here. If you're interested in other videos, click right here or click right here. Have a good day and thank your blood pressure. Oh, oh, I thought the audio fell out. Um, I don't want to, I really don't want to do this again. Your heart muscle is a... <laughs> Why do I say these funny sentences?